So there's one thing that got asked time and time again when we've been working with advanced custom fields in recent tutorials, is how do we take the text and replace it with icons? Well, in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to do just that. We're gonna take advanced custom fields, Elementor Pro, and the free plugin for Font Awesome 5. We're gonna link all those things together, and we're gonna see how easy it is to start adding in icons into your select lists and into your templates. Well, my name is Paul C. This is WP Touch, the channel where I help you get more from WordPress. If this is your first time on the channel, please consider subscribing and smashing that bell icon below to be notified every time we add new content every single week. Okay, so let's just jump over into the dashboard now and start taking a look at how we can use those icons inside our custom designed websites with advanced custom fields. Now the page layout we're working with is this one. As you can see on the right hand side where we've got property features, everything is listed in there as text. And that's perfectly fine. However, it looks much better if you can replace some of these kinds of things with icons. Now, before we move any further, if you want to see how we created this page in this site, it's all done through Advanced Custom Fields, so you can take a look at this. I'll put a link in the description below and it'll show you how to get up to speed with all of the things we covered in this video. However, taking that into consideration, we're gonna jump in where we've got things set up through Advanced Custom Fields and so on, and just go through the process of changing things over to display icons. Now, the first thing we're going to need to do if we jump over into the dashboard is we've got to come into the plugin section and we have to install Font Awesome. Now, this is going to make your theme compatible with the Font Awesome icons. However, if you're using a theme like Ocean WP, this is basically built in. If you put the short codes in for Font Awesome, icons they will display without the need for this plugin so it's worth checking just to make sure to see if your theme currently supports that straight out of the box however we're using the hello theme which is a bare bones theme and font awesome 5 is not supported so what we're going to do is install this plugin completely free and it's by the developers of font awesome themselves so you know it's going to work with both wordpress and the font awesome library once that's done we'll activate it and we now have the ability to be able to display those icons as part of our website Okay, so once that's activated, the next thing we're gonna do is jump over into our custom fields and come down to our field groups. Now we've all, like I said, we've already gone through and created these. So what we want is the property section. So if we come into the properties, you can see there's all our different sections. And if we look through all the different field groups we've got, we have features, which is a set of checkboxes. So let's expand that out. And you can see everything is already set up in here, including the choices. However, we can do more with these choices. We're not limited to just having what we currently have, which is just the label, which is used for both the label and the value. No, we can do a lot more than just that. So let's get rid of what's already in there. We'll just delete those completely out of there. Now, if you take a look on the left-hand side under choices, you can see it says it shows us the kind of format we can work with. First is a value, the second is the label or label then value. And what you can do with this is you can separate the two out. And then if we scroll down a little further, you can specify what value is going to be returned. In other words, we want the value, the label, or both of them together. So we can use these in conjunction with each other to start creating a little bit more unique, iconic listings. So let's just start off by saying we want something like free Wi-Fi. What we need to do now is just put a space in, put a colon in, then a space again. And now what we can do is we can drop in there the information we want for the icon itself. Let's come back over to Font Awesome. And let's just search for Wi-Fi and let it find any icons we can use. Now, if you're wondering why some are darker than others, anything that's lighter gray, they're pro. You'd need to have a pro account to get access to these icons. So if you want the full range of tens of thousands of icons, you have to purchase the annual license. However, you can, if you want to, just use the free ones, which is what we're going to concentrate on in this video. Okay, let's click on the Wi-Fi. That'll open up and show us all the details about the Wi-Fi icon, including some of the pro options down the right hand side. However, all we want is the free version. So we'll say start using this icon. That will now open up and show us a short piece of HTML code that we can use for this icon. So all we need to do is copy this. So we're just gonna copy that from there, jump back over to our dashboard inside the custom field section. And in there, we're gonna paste that in. Now this little block you can see inside the speech marks, that's the code that's being used from Font Awesome. So what this is gonna do is, is this gonna place in an icon based upon that CSS class. And because we've got Font Awesome 5 installed as a plugin, we can then reference that and that will display the icon. So that's the first part of it. Now what we can do is we can, if we want to, just leave this and say we want to use both the label and the value. Or 
you can come up in between these parentheses and you can drop in there exactly what you want to say. So you can say free Wi-Fi. So now what will happen is if we specify we only want to have the actual label, which is one of this, this section, then what will happen is it'll display the icon using the CSS code and that little block we've got there, which is the short code. And also free Wi-Fi will be listed as well. So we have both of those items in there. It's up to you how you want to do it. You can do it this way. And then if you want to, you can easily target various different aspects of this through its own dedicated CSS and you can style things accordingly. And we'll take a look at some of the things you can do with that a little later in this video. So we'll say there's free Wi-Fi. Let's just say you want to do the same thing again. And we're going to say parking. We'll do the same. So we'll just put space, colon, space. Come back over to font awesome. We'll close this down. We'll jump back to the previous page. And what we'll do on there is we'll just search for car. We'll let that find a car for us. And there we go. So we'll just click on this one. Once that's opened up, what we'll do is we'll come down and use this icon, copy this over again, jump back into advanced custom fields, drop that in there. And then we'll just simply copy this from there and drop that inside there. Okay, so we've now created two choices, both we've got the name that you're going to see in the back end, which will be free Wi-Fi and parking and so on. And then we've also got the icon and the text that will be displayed on the front end inside our template. Now you can keep on repeating this for as many options as you want inside advanced custom fields. And that's basically it. You just keep on doing this for all the options, including the icons you want to use from sort of uh, Font Awesome 5. So. Once we've done that, next thing we're going to do is we're going to come in and we're going to say, let's set on the other some of, some of the other parameters we want on here. We're going to say we want this layout to be horizontal. So in the dashboard, and this is the dashboard section, it'll display all these options horizontally. You can see we've got prepend an extra checkbox to toggle all choices. We're going to disable that for now. Then we're going to set this to value and we're going to leave everything else as is. So we're going to come back up, update. Once we've done that, we're going to come back down to one of our properties and go into all properties. And obviously any other things we had in there previously, or the, the sort of checkboxes and so on, all that's going to be gone. Let's come into our three bedroom penthouse and we'll click on there. And if we scroll down, we'll see we now have those options at the bottom. You can see we've got free Wi-Fi and parking. So there's our features for this particular property. So we can just check both of those and we'll click on update. Now, obviously, this is just the dashboard side of things. So we're only seeing this in the dashboard. We need to update our theme, or our template, to actually show that data. So if we just jump back over and refresh this, all you'll find now is the property features will just be still there because we've still got those previous te tech boxes, but we're going to get rid of that in a moment anyway. None of our icons are actually showing up. So let's deal with that next. Let's come over into our template section and down into Theme Builder. And once we're inside there, we need to find the property that we want, which is property single. We're going to say edit that with Elementor. Once we've done that, we can now go through and start displaying the icons and the information that we want that's now been created as part of our custom field. So let's just scroll down. We'll just remove this widget from here and we're now ready to create our new custom widget. So what we're going to do, we're going to come up and we're going to just choose the text widget. So we're going to say text editor We're going to drag and drop that into there. Now you can see it pre-fills this out like you normally expect it to do, but what we want is the dynamic option. So let's come into dynamic. We're going to scroll right the way down to the bottom until we get to ACF field. Click to expand that. And you see now that drops that into the area for dynamic content, but we still need to go in and tell it exactly which field we want to reference. Click on the little wrench icon, come down to key, and we're going to come down to features. And click on there. And you see what will happen is that'll pull up the features that were in the previous listing. So all that's happening is because even though we've deleted those entries from inside the uh, sort of meta field section inside ACF, they still exist in the database. Now, you wouldn't normally have this, obviously, because you'd be started from scratch. However, don't worry about that because they will be overridden when we make the new choices. So that's perfectly fine. We're going to drop that in there before we're going to come in and say property features. I'm going to put a full colon on the space so that will prepend that. And if we want to, we can easily come into here and we can say we want to do things like, we'll just say you want this to be strong, just to make it nice and bold. And the same at the end of that. So we just add a little bit of styling to that section to separate it. Okay, so that's that side of things done. Now you're not seeing anything like I say, because we don't have it referenced correctly. So what we're going to do is we'll come into the settings section, down to our preview, and we just quickly change this from the four bedroom detached house and we'll change this to the penthouse. There you go, three bedroom penthouse. 
apply and preview. Now you may find this doesn't display correctly. It's just a little bit of a quirk when it comes down to working with Elemental and dynamic data. Sometimes it just doesn't display the content correctly. All we're going to do is we're going to click on update on this to commit those changes. And then we'll just jump over to our test page, refresh to make sure everything is there. So we'll refresh this. And as you can see, there's the details, including the icons that we placed in there and the text that comes with it. So we've already gone through now and replaced those basic text entries with icons, which is much better in my opinion. It's a much more visual way of doing it. But like I say, because you are dealing with the text and the icon, it's up to you if you want to remove that text, not place it in there, anything you want with it. However, it doesn't look particularly pretty in there at the moment. So how can we go about dealing with that? Well, there's a couple of things we can do. We can go in and we can target those icons and specifically those icons, and then we can style them from there. Now to do that, you're going to need to do this through CSS. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back into our dashboard, exit from Elementor. Once we've done that, we're gonna come into the customizer for our theme. So we're gonna come into appearance and customize. Once we're inside there, we can go to additional CSS. Let's just come in and find one of those properties for sale a second. So don't worry about the way this all looks. It's not exactly the prettiest. So let's come into there so we can see the property we're targeting and we can see the icon. So we've got something on screen now we can start working with. Okay, so how do we target that? Let's come back over to the Font Awesome site a second. And as you can see, we've got the class is set up in there and it's FAS then space FA-car, Font Awesome. What we can do is we can target that specifically by using FA-car or we can target any of the classes that start with FAS. And that's what we're going to do because all of the icons are going to have that class of FAS space something. Let's come back in. So what we're going to do is we're going to put period FAS and then we're going to open our brackets so we can start styling things. And now what we can do is we can apply what styling we want in there. So if we wanted to, let's just say we're going to do something really simple just to test that it all works. I'm going to say color and we're going to say red and close that off. And you can see that now immediately picks up the styling we just applied to it. So we can quickly and easily target those things. So by applying some simple CSS code, we can now go in, start styling everything the way we want, making sure that everything looks exactly how we want it to, to fit in with the design that we're working with with our WordPress site. Well, there we go. That's how we can use Advanced Custom Fields, Elemental Pro and the Font Awesome 5 together to create much more interesting page designs using icons instead of simply text. Have you used this technique yourself or is it new to you? Let me know in the comment section below because I'd love to get your feedback. As always, all the applicable links are in the description below alongside our affiliate links. So if you're considering purchasing anything that we support, please consider using our links. It costs you no more money, but does support the channel and help us create more great content for you moving forward. If you want to check out more about Advanced Custom Fields, WordPress, and all those kinds of good things, take a look at the videos you can see on screen right now. They're going to give you a ton of resources and information on getting more from WordPress alongside Advanced Custom Fields. Well, as always, my name is Paul C. This has been WP Tuts, and until next time, Take care.